What is up, everybody, and welcome back to episode 16 of our Pro Cyclist Mode. And today is a big one. Our first Grand Tour, a race where we should be able to inflict a little bit of damage. The Giro d'Italia is finally upon us. And if we take a look at the preview of the stages coming up, looks like in the early couple weeks of the tour we should have plenty of opportunities to fight for stage wins until there around the end it looks like we're probably gonna fall off the rails our recovery stat not great and our mountain stat only at 71 not quite good enough yet to challenge so we are going to be hunting for stage wins early and maybe look to join the king of the mountains or maybe the points classification race we'll have to see how that shakes out but we're definitely going to be looking to fight for a jersey in our first grand tour as for the first stage it is going to be an 8.3 kilometer time trial definitely not going to be one for us we're going to be down in the time a little bit early but we know gc isn't really on the table for us so we're just going to get through this as quick as possible and try not to lose a ton of time and we are officially off in the Giro d'Italia. We're going to try and get up to speed quick and then pull it back a little bit. We know prologues, time trials aren't really our thing. We're just going to try and give the best time we can right now. We'll actually set it up to two times speed. We are losing a little bit of stamina a little bit too quick. But as we come across the first time check, we are going to be in 95th place, 37 seconds down, which honestly isn't too bad as we look to crank up the effort just a little bit we want to run out as soon as we cross the line and that's going to be 116th place right now but a minute and three seconds back from Ethan Hader and we knew stage one wasn't really going to be our stage stage two not going to be ours either this is one for the sprinters a 179.8 kilometer flat stage we're just going to look to stay with the group and not use too much energy today. And with just over 10k to go, we are on Fabio Jakobsen and Jonathan Milan's wheel. Seems like a pretty decent spot to be. As Simone Consoni, our sprinter, starts to move up in the peloton. We're not looking to cause too much drama here for ourselves today, but there is a slight little uphill right before the end maybe we can make something happen but uh, it's really unlikely is Alpeson de Kunik really just banging on the front right now Jakobsen actually getting caught back a little bit as with about well 5.9k we're gonna go ahead and use our energy gel and just keep holding on to Fabio Jakobsen who has to move up soon I mean we might have picked the wrong wheel here but we're gonna go to set our own effort if he doesn't pick it up soon and with 3.3k left it doesn't look like he's going to as we can set our effort to 93 I knew we said we weren't gonna do anything but we're gonna go ahead and give a little dig if there is a split I don't want to be caught behind I don't think we're going to but for the first official road stage it's gonna be Olav Koi Jasper Phillips and Jonathan Milan and big surprise there Fabio Jakobsen all the way down in 11th place as we come across the line in 17th a pretty decent first flat stage and that will lead us into stage three the first hill stage at 192.3 kilometers and it doesn't look like it's gonna suit our profile too well but with the tiredness creeping up on Vladimir Saracen's legs we're gonna have to look for our stage wins earlier rather than later so any kind of hill stage or medium mountain stage we're gonna push for as hard as we can and with just under 25k to go here the two-man breakaway still has three minutes on the peloton it looks like a bunch of teams are working together to try to pull that back but it might be a case of too little too late Matthew Bergado keeping us safe for this last little hill where we're gonna try to attack over the top but it might all be for nothing if we can't pull these two back in 
And with 16k to go, we are about to reach the base of that last climb, the Guaren, as we are trying to move it to the front. We'll see if we can use our sneak and attack to try to get over the top. It looks like we are dropping that Ineos Rider. Now, hopefully we didn't go a little too early. I don't think we did. But right now, we do have a 16 second gap to the Peloton and we are making them work to chase us down. And with 9K to go, the Peloton has just caught back up. Soren Krag Anderson caught up to us for a second and we are waiting for attacks over the top just like that from Pavel Sivakov, Ruben Guerrero, Andrea Bagioli. And the Peloton is definitely not going to let that go this late as now we are in a race to keep up with this front group and with 6k left a little downhill we are definitely going to use our energy gel a little early today as it looks like up the road Simon Yates trying to make a move uh, Danny Martinez also looking to try something but for right now it looks like we're going to be just leading out for Consoni as Yates, Higuita, Bagioli try to go again they're not going to be able to get off of our wheel and we are in a pretty decent position here. Energy gel popped at the perfect time. And with 1.3, 1.2 left, we're going to start our sprint as Burgado can't quite catch Thibaut Nice, who's going to go ahead and take stage three. And it is going to be Burgado coming across the line in second, followed by Jasper Philipson as we collect another top 10, finishing in ninth place. And overall on the day, a great result for Kofidis. We have four riders in the top 10. Bergado, uh, Simone Consoni, Giulio Ciccone, and ourselves. So I would expect us to jump up the team rankings after this one. And at the start of stage four, we will move into the mountains for the first time. It is a 186.1 kilometer medium mountain stage. So we will be on the cards to do well here. But this last little uphill into the flat looks like something we can take advantage of right now. Matthew Bergado sitting in 10th place. I'm assuming they're going to try and have us work for him, but we're going to be selfish with our time here at the Giro d'Italia because we definitely need a stage win bad, and as soon as we can get that, we can start working for our teammates. And with 22k left, we are coming up to the bottom of that second to last climb. We're trying to stick with all the favorites. The breakaway is a four-man break, only about two minutes up the road, so looks like Jumbo Visma is starting to pace pretty hard. Remco trying to go up the road. We can't let that happen, so we're just going to chase that back a little bit and then sit back down. So we're just trying to make it over this and attack up that last hill, but it looks like the other teams have something different in mind. And with 18k left to go, we have had a look at Remco's energy bar, and it is not where it should be right now, so we are thinking about trying to come around right now and make an attack of our own, leave some of these guys behind us, and that's exactly what we're going to try and do. Make the attack pretty strong, sit on 87. We do have a gap of about 30 seconds to the peloton right now, and we are on the road chasing down this early break and we have managed to stay away until that little downhill section where we will hit the acrobatic descent and try to increase our lead over the peloton we're taking risk after risk right now we have about a minute but this last climb is no joke we're gonna have to manage our efforts wisely as we come down to the bottom with about a minute and five seconds over the peloton. And with 5.7k left, we have reached the bottom of that climb. We are steady pacing on 85 right now. We're gonna try and let that peloton close us down a little bit before we make our attack and try to stay away until the end. But right now, things are looking really good. The gap's starting to close, but not at too high of a rate. As I say that, it looks like they're starting to attack back in the peloton, so we're going to raise our effort a little bit. And with 2k to go to the top, we are going to go ahead and use our energy gel. Because if we don't stay away until 
the top of this climb as we're about to run out of yellow bar with 1.6k to go until the top of this climb we're gonna have to move it down and invite the chasing peloton to grab a hold of our wheel but with 1k left until the top we might be able to stay away I doubt it they're making too many gains right now so we're gonna have to try and just sit up it was a good idea Evnopol Carapaz everybody coming around right now but I don't know if we would have been able to stick with this move either way as Julio Chicone decides to go around we're gonna give it everything we got until this little downhill section to try and save time we're just gonna move it on to 99 we're hoping that Ben O'Connor and Pierre Latour can pull us back but Richard Carapaz gonna take the stage over Ben Tull at Remco Evnepoel and Sergi Guita and I'm hoping we didn't lose too much time here it doesn't look like we will maybe another minute as we come across the line in 17th place and after we decided to make a little risky attack it did pay off we're up to 17th place Julio Chicone up to 10th but for stage 5 it's gonna be kinda like a day off 175.5 kilometer flat stage definitely not gonna be one for us and uh, we're just gonna sit in the group all day and use as little energy as possible and with 7k to go we are on Jasper Philipson's wheel uh, nothing too crazy happening the peloton was caught and we're just gonna sit on Jasper Philipson and hope we can follow him till the end of the race is with about 4k left our energy gel pops we were looking at making a move but decided against it we don't want to use too much of our energy is now we can use our sneak to get through the field with about 1.6 left we can go ahead and start our sprint it's gonna be Fabio Jakobsen right in front of us Consoni coming around as well and it's gonna be Fabio Jakobsen that takes the stage followed by, by Olav Koy Jasper Philipson Pascal Ackerman as Consoni is our best place rider coming in at 12th and we come across the line in 17th and that is going to set us up nicely for stage six another medium mountain stage this time only 158.1 kilometers so maybe there's a look to try and get into a breakaway here there's a long descent that we might be able to take advantage of but we'll have to see how the race plays out I think this is going to uh, definitely suit us pretty well we just have to make sure that we can stick with the favorites there up that final climb and with 57 K left we have just come over the last of those two climbs the uh, Forza di Presta and that was brutal the peloton has broken and I wouldn't be surprised to see some splits on this little downhill section and with 13.5 K left we have just reached the base of the final ascent into Ascoli and the peloton down to 83 riders Ben Askey is pacing really hard right now our stamina not in the best spot we might lose some time today but we're gonna try our best to stick with this front group even though it's looking pretty unlikely right now and with six and a half K to go we have done a pretty good job of staying with this group as we're gonna go ahead and hit our sneak I've been alternating between 85 and 87 because that last bit of mountain looks pretty steep and our number one rider right now Julio Chicone his stamina lot not looking too great right now so we are in full damage control mode right now as we do start to come around maybe some of the bigger riders have lost a little bit of their legs with 4k left we're gonna use our energy gel set our effort to 87 Chicone looks like he's almost out of it as the breakaway almost certainly going to win this stage but our yellow bar just not cooperating with us again two stages in a row where we just run out of stamina a little too early and we cannot afford to keep up the 82 pace we are gonna lose the front group which might give us some breakaway options in the future as the race or the stage does come to an end. Harry Sweeney, Derek G, 
Roger Adria are going to be your top three as we are just about to crack 0.9 away from the finish line. But if we're close enough to this front group, maybe, no, I don't think we're going to be on the same time. So might as well just move it up to 99. Watch everybody come in. Julio Chicone up there in 19th place. He is our highest finisher. Burgado in 26th as we come across the line right after Michael Storr in 39th. And to round out the first week of the Giro d'Italia, Stage 7 from Notoresco to Tourmaly, a 174.8 kilometer flat stage. There right before the final sprint, there's a nice little elevation change. We might be able to use that because right now we're getting desperate for a stage win and we have to start taking more chances. And we are here with eight and a half kilometers left to go. We are going to go ahead and pop our energy gel at 7.5 because we want to attack up that last little hill, I guess you could call it. It's more like just a tiny elevation change, but we are going to use our sneak and use some energy to move through this front group. Bora Hansgrohe just now starting to pace as soon as we turn up the pressure a little bit and our energy gel hits now just a, s a slight bit too early and we're gonna go with 89 and I don't like that this is a sprint but we are gonna use our sprint up that final hill try to just stay on 99 until the end of the race we know people are going to come around us. Arno De Lee going to be the first. Sam Bennett, Sam Wellsford, all the uh, typical guys come around us. We had to at least try and make a move there. But it looks like it will be a top 20 for us. Coming across the line in 19th place again. Just can't seem to crack that top 10. And for stage 8... It looks like it's going to be another brutal mountain stage. This time, 170.2 kilometers. We're climbing the Boca de la Selva into a long downhill, and then we're going to finish atop the Guardia San Fermondi. This probably won't be one of ours unless we can recover some stamina on this downhill, which, with the pace that this Giro's been going, is very unlikely. I, I do like our chances up here, but with the talent around us, I don't know if we have the mountain stats to compete. And at the start of the day today, we were told to jump in the breakaway, so that's exactly what we did. We've got a pretty decent group with us right now, and we'll see if this will hold on until the end. And with 58.5k to go group still has two minutes on the peloton behind their stamina not looking too great but ours also taking a hit as well with 8k to go to the top of this climb I don't know if we're gonna be able to keep up with the likes of Lorenzo Fortunato, Viermos, Lawson Craddock and the rest but right now we're not gonna have enough energy if we stay on 85 to put in a little attack over the top where we can use our acrobatic descent we also might not need to go all out because we can make up some ground with our acrobatic descent there's a lot of strategy going on right now and I'm not quite sure which is the right route to take as we slow it down a little bit Piccolo is dragging everybody up towards the top now we're gonna have to set our effort up a little higher again and with 4.8 to the top it looks like we're in a pretty bad spot right now and with 4k to the top we are just falling off the back that front group Fred Wright Casper Asgren are gonna be our lifeline as it flattens out a tiny bit up here I don't know if that's gonna be enough to save us we're certainly not gonna have enough to make an attack but we just need to get over with two and a half K to the top, our yellow bar almost completely depleted. If we sit on 77, there might be a hope that we can come over the top and it's 
not looking likely. 1.4k and the attacks are starting to come from the break. We're stuck back here with Fred Wright but we will be using our acrobatic ascent acrobatic descent I should say to try and catch back up and we are not to the bottom of this descent yet but we have caught up to the tune of 49 seconds to this front group so there is still a very outside shot at a little bit of hope for us to come out of here with the stage win and with 10k left we have been caught by the peloton a group of 37 now at the front our stamina is completely gone but we can at least help out Giulio Shikone, I assume, as we will set him to follow us. And again, I, I don't think there is a, a real shot at us winning this as the sprint point that is dangerously close to the end starts to come off, but we will lead Giulio Shikone up this final climb and see if we can deliver Kofidis our first victory of this Giro. Now with 5.6k left, we still have enough for a little bit of a dig at the end, but this is going to get very steep here in about 1k, and the pace is already starting to get cranked up, so we're going to go ahead and set our effort to 87 and deliver Julio Chicone to the front, Anthony Perez. Uh, kind of getting in our way a little bit as we are now going to use our energy gel, use our sneak, and try to get Giulio Chicone up here. It doesn't look like it's working that well just yet, but with 2k left attacks from Sivakov, Gaudu, Higuita starting to go, we are going to break. Looks like Giulio Chicone has lost our wheel. I don't know why he's not up here with us, but we are completely cracked now with 1.2k left and it's Julio Chicone's turn we can't even attack for him now but we can set him to sprint uh, I think that was probably my fault completely forgot I had him on my wheel so he also gets blocked off by Jack Haig but it's going to be Ben Tullet, Andrea Baggioli David Gaudu and Remco Evnepoel here at stage 8 now my only hope is that Julio Chicone comes across with the same same finishing time. And up next will be stage nine. No rest for Vladimir Saracen as it's another medium mountain stage. This time 154 kilometers. Uh, since our tiredness is so bad, our legs just aren't there. I don't think we're going to have a great result on this, but Maybe we'll jump into a break and see if we can start our race for the King of the Mountains jersey. And with 34.5k to go, we have started the Ovindoli. And the pace, as expected, is absolutely crushing us. Our team has shattered already. Burgado about to crack. And we are not going to be too far behind. I doubt we stay with this group to the top. But once we get through the sprint point, maybe... It'll quiet down a little bit, but still our stamina in such a bad spot. The tiredness really taking a toll, and I assume it will for the rest of this Giro d'Italia. And with 25k to go, we have been dropped from that elite group of 16 that is now the Peloton. Back here with Oscar Onley, Ruben Guerrero, Max Poole, Louis Menkes, Jack Haig. So some decent climbers. We're not embarrassing ourselves here or anything, but... This should have been expected, and we're just going to try and come in at a respectable time as, as much as we can for the rest of this one. And we have started the final climb as the leaders come in. Ben Tullet taking another stage, followed by Richard Carapaz, Remco Evnepoel, as we're just going to crank the speed up a little bit and use the rest of our energy to finish wherever we can and that's going to be a 37th place finish and it's going to be well but basically end any hope we have at young rider or gc and that brings us to stage 10 l'aquila to foligno 
139.3 kilometer flat stage and I think from here on out we're gonna be looking to get into the break as much as possible especially with a nice little hill there in the last fourth of this race maybe see if we can stay away until the end now that we're down by about 17 minutes and as promised we have jumped into the breakaway it's quite a strong one Mark Donovan, Jay Vine, Sylvain Monique, and Tom Scoinchin here so we're gonna have to ride this one pretty perfectly even if we're gonna win it from the group but that's exactly what we're gonna look to try and do and with 3k left to go before we get to the top of this last hill Peloton dangerously close I think any attack from here isn't really gonna stick but you know we do have to at least give it a go and with 2k we're gonna use our acceleration to try and separate use up that red bar and we can't get away from Tom Scoinch so it looks like it's going to be a sprint finish here as they are just way stronger than we are today and unfortunately with 5k we have been caught so there will be no stage win for the group came achingly close as now the sprinters teams come around looks like Fred Wright leading out Phil Bauhaus for Jonathan Milan they've got to be considered the favorites right now as we come up to the line Fred Wright look like looks like he's done and Dylan Grunewagen has taken the front and unfortunately we are going to not be able to see that finish but it is going to be Fabio Jakobsen, Dylan Grunewagen, and Jonathan Milan a great day for the sprinters but oh so close for our breakaway group and that will take us to stage 11 Perugia to Montalcino 163 kilometer medium mountain stage which we have not had the best of times on we're still in 19th place despite being 17 minutes back third place in the young rider category but those are pretty unrealistic we again might look to jump in the breakaway and see if we can stay away depends on how the legs are feeling and what kind of race day condition we have and again we have jumped into the break breakaway we are in a plus two day today however so maybe that can help to combat our tiredness in the later parts of the stage and with 23k left we have been absolutely burned out by the breakaway uh, I think our tiredness might be just a little too much for us to continue being effective in this race so I think after this stage I'll continue racing them but we'll probably skip over them because I don't think there's going to be a shot where we're going to be effective again and we did end up coming across the line in 68th place 11 minutes and 31 seconds back another terrible day just in front of Louis Mankies and Max Poole so again don't feel too terrible just the legs aren't there so that's probably going to be it for this Giro d'Italia and that is going to bring to an end what was a very disappointing episode for me personally I had very high hopes that we'd be able to at least pick off a stage win be competitive through the middle part of this race I knew the tiredness was going to be a factor but I didn't know it was going to be that big of a factor our recovery stat also not doing us any favors but I think for the next episode we will if, if there's anything else in the Giro d'Italia I'll bring it to you but we're gonna skip the Dauphiné since we will be having rest weeks for both of these two weeks and then starting off with the Czech National Championships going into the Tour de Wallonia which is something that we have earmarked the uh, San Sebastian Classic and the La Maurienne maybe we can find some other races to throw in there but the main point being that I don't think the rest of the Giro d'Italia in full will be in the next episode but 
If you did enjoy the content, please feel free to leave a like and to subscribe. I will put out at least one episode of this series per week. On good weeks, I like to put out two, and I will put out one episode of our Team Sky Career Mode every Saturday, and that is just picking up and starting to get really good. But as always, I wanted to say thank you, and I will see you later.